On today's show, we explore the extraordinary symptom that many people have been suffering from after they've been struck down by COVID, loss of smell. This is Euphoria News, broadcasting around the world from London. Hello and welcome to Euphoria News. My name is Dr. David Bull and welcome to our second show of October 2021. 2020 and 2021 will go down as years we will never forget. The coronavirus pandemic has wreaked havoc around the world. It's infected nearly a quarter of a billion people worldwide and it's killed nearly five million. And those that have survived have been plagued with a plethora of ongoing symptoms. Now, one of the most striking clinical features of COVID infection is loss of smell, which may persist after recovery from COVID. In a minute, I'll be talking about this COVID-related phenomenon to Professor Basil Landis. He is Associate Physician and Head of the Rhinology and Olfactory Unit at the University of Geneva in Switzerland. He's also a world expert on smell functionality. Olfactory dysfunction is a common side effect of many post-viral illnesses, but there is now a huge body of evidence emerging that taste and smell loss are common symptoms of COVID-19 that may emerge and may persist long after initial infection. And the impact on someone's quality of life as a result is really quite profound. Many patients report difficulty managing their condition and many of them find little professional support. They also find their eating habits change and as a result they lose weight, they lose pleasure in eating food and they shun social engagements. And in short, it can often severely disrupt daily living, impacting on psychological well-being, physical health, relationships and sense of self. Well, to tell us more about this, I'm delighted to be joined by Professor Basil Landis. He is head of the Rhinology and Olfactory Unit at the University of Geneva in Switzerland, and his research interests are in disorders of taste, smell, and the trigeminal nerve system. Professor, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Let me, let me start by asking you, what sort of percentage of COVID patients actually experience this phenomenon, this, this loss of smell? Hello, David. Uh, thank you for the question. So. Um, it is estimated, based on the data we have now, that roughly 60% of the patients would experience a sense of smell or taste loss uh, when they are infected with COVID. Now, it's less clear how many people recover um, quickly, intermediately, uh, or, or do not recover so far. I mean, that's extraordinary. I, I knew it was common. I didn't realise quite how common it was. I know on a personal level, so many friends and colleagues who've been affected. And I suppose your, your um, point is really valid, which is we are at the beginning of a very long journey. So, so is it fair to say we really don't know how often the condition doesn't resolve? Yeah, if you're scientifically sticking to what we, what we can read out of the articles and what all of us experience in these specialized smell and taste clinics, we can only state how many people are affected in the, in the beginning, but we are still, all of us are following up people and, and we all hope that the, there's a little, little amount of people who will uh, really never recover. We are so, so what do you recommend to these patients? I mean, clearly suffering from persistent smell loss is going to be fairly detrimental to these patients. For some of them, it's really life changing. So, so what do you recommend they do or can't they do anything? Yeah, let's, let's, there are three things. I, I, think, I think, first of all, they should get an assessment because what we often see is people, uh, they, they drop in and say, well, my, what, my life has changed. I have really lost sense of smell. It's, it has not come back or it, it has only slightly come back. And when we test them, um, in, a, in a majority of cases, we find that they still have a, a fairly reasonable olfactory function. And that gives to me as a physician the possibility to counsel them correctly and say, listen, there is a high likelihood that that should recover. Now, let me, let me just say something else. It's, it's known from prior to COVID that infectious uh, agents can induce smell disorders. And it's known from prior to COVID, since we have a long follow-up, that these people will recover in the majority of cases, but it takes two, two and a half, three years. So 
for COVID, we are like half time, I would say, for those who, who are still uh, having an impaired sense of smell. Second, I would not tell them you cannot do anything. Second, I would tell them, listen, this spontaneous recovery we know takes place in patients with viral loss can be improved. This we also know from prior to COVID can be improved with what we call smell training. This is constant exposure to, to odorants, smelling, interest, being interested in smelling. And, and this seems to promote neural plasticity. So, so this is olfactory training. How exactly does that work? Do you, 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 you expose yourself to different smells and relearn, I suppose, relearn the skills of what those smells are? Yeah, it's, it's the loss of a sense. Uh, and it, it, it has to be, in certain ways, it has to be really relearned. But it's not fully clear how that works. We think that this, it's, it's a, a, a bottom-up and a top-down mechanism, which means, first of all, you have to smell odors. You know, there must be odorants coming into your nose. And, and you do not necessarily um, need to, to identify what you smell. But if you perceive something, you know, you can say there is something, that's already a good thing. And then by, this is the top down part, by concentrating and focusing on that activity of, of smelling that, that impression you get, and maybe you have a, a verbal label or an image what this is, what you smell, this seems to promote cortical, so central nervous activity and it's a, it's a kind of a relearning, similar to somebody who has to, to, to relearn simple movements after a stroke, for instance. So, so that's how we imagine now this works. And it seems to work fairly well. So what's the mechanism? What's going on here? What does the virus do? And, and what damage does it cause to, to these, these cells? So prior to COVID, we had no idea why, why uh, infectious agents could could uh, impair olfaction. Due to COVID, there has lots of research being, being done. And um, it is now pretty clear that the COVID uh, infects not the, the sensory neuron, not the olfactory neuron uh, itself, but it seems to infect the uh, sustaining cell. It's, it's, these are cells that surround the olfactory neuron and, and in a kind of feed them or, or uh, help them to function. And so, you can imagine that if, if the if the the feeding source of the or the functioning source of the neuron breaks down, the neuron will not work, and, and this also probably explains why uh, so many people recover very quickly. As soon as the sustaining cell is working again, the neuron has not been physically damaged; it works again. But uh, it's only half of the story. We don't. It doesn't explain why some people do not recover and still have impaired function. So we know more than before, but not everything in detail. So when the sense of smell does come back, it doesn't always come back in, in the same way, does it? It can often come back in a very altered way. Yes, that's what we currently observe most, is, is we have many people uh, or patients, I would say, they come in and say, yeah, I, I have some recovery. I, sometimes they even say, yeah, I, I had a period where it was normal again, and all of a sudden they experience the onset of very foulish and bad odors. and, and this is what we call parosmia, it's a distortion that is, that is triggered. So imagine whenever you smell your coffee, it does not smell like coffee. It does not smell nothing at all, but it smells like rotten egg. Now, the good news is that also prior to COVID, we knew that all these distortions, they spontaneously regress also after a certain while. Now, the while, and that is the bad news, is it's not weeks or, or it's sometimes months. And it usually also comes back with uh, the improvement of the olfactory function in general. Now, there's not many data out there, but I have the feeling and I would like to believe that the smell training also helps the parosmia, these smell distortions. At least that's what we advise for them. So, I mean, some patients must feel pretty desperate and will try anything to resolve their symptoms. Are there things that you would definitely say, you must not do this? Yeah, the variety and of, of how people uh, react to smell loss is, is astonishingly wide. We have people not caring about that smell loss any, any, at all, and others are devastated. Now, I can speak for those who, who come to see us, and that's probably those who are really bothered. Um, I've seen many crazy things over the years, many anecdotal things going from acupuncture and surgeries and so on. As a general rule, I, I stick to what where there are data out there. So smell training helps. Uh, 
assessment of, of the olfactory function helps because you can state something in prognosis. Follow up helps, you know, if you see, if you do an assessment twice, so you can see, okay, there is improvement, even though you did not recognize it, you can measure it. Um, I would definitely um, warn people to do things that has a harm, that has a harm profile, which is not negligible. And amongst these things, there is surgery. I would not do surgery for uh, um, COVID olfactory loss. I would strongly, and that's not only my opinion, that's the opinion of the, of the working group of all the olfactory guys like me uh, is is for the moment there is no strong evidence that uh, oral steroids so cortisone would be of any help um, a few data suggest there may be something like that but um, it's not it's not strong enough I would say and I would be very careful because the side uh, effect profile of cortisone already given is is also not negligible. Uh, especially if you cannot guarantee any any benefit. Now, um, there has been some debate about nasal steroids, sprays, you know, you, you take, that's, the harm profile is very low, and it's not, if you have any nasal symptoms, stiff nose and so on, it's certainly not bad to give that, but there is no evidence that that will bring back olfaction quicker. Well, it's been really fascinating to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed, Professor Landis. You're welcome. Thank you, David. Well, that's it for this second Euphoria News show of October. Many thanks to my guest, to Professor Basil Landis. As always, you can find more information about Euphoria and you can also register for the Euphoria meetings on the euphoria.eu website, where you can also sign up to receive the latest news via email. Our Twitter address is at Euphoria, so make sure you follow us and keep up to date. Until next month, from all of us here, goodbye. Goodbye.